Hello, Pokemon trainers! Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Battle Stadium Singles video here on iStarly TV. This is part of my Battle Stadium Singles Road to Masters, where I try to climb the online ranked ladder. Today I'm actually continuing to use the same exact team that I featured in the last video, so I will put, put a Poke Paste of this team in the description so you can kind of check out all the EVs and stuff. And also, if you're interested in a code for the team, feel free to let me know. I, I did not currently make one, but if anyone if enough people are interested, I can go ahead and make one. But anyways, the team was built around Brute Bonnet. This is an offensively inclined Brute Bonnet with Spore, Sucker Punch, Trailblaze, and Crunch. This Pokemon just looks like it has a lot of potential with, with Stab, Sucker Punch, and a really high attack stat alongside Booster Energy. It looks like it has potential to hit really hard. It also has really good bulk. I think the biggest issue with Brute Bonnet is its defensive typing, which is actually, frankly, pretty awful. It's weak to a lot of common types in the meta, so I'm, I've am i gone ahead and given it Terra Poison just to kind of counteract a lot of those weaknesses. But we're gonna try to force some Brute Bonnet games here just because I think it's a cool Pokemon with a lot of potential. And every time I've tried to feature it in previous videos, I just didn't have the opportunity to really bring it or really show it off. From there, we've got a lot of standard Pokemon. I'm not gonna spend too much time here. We've got Dragon Dance, Terra, Electric, Bax, Caliber. We've got a bulky King Gambit set that I like a lot. It's also shiny, which is amazing. We've got my one of my favorite Pokemon even from Series 1, and that is Lead, Sash, Garchomp with Stealth Rock and Dragon Tail. Terra Fire with Terra Blast rounds out some weaknesses pretty well, makes it a decent offensive threat. Although often I'm just playing this to set up rocks and kind of, you know, do some damage before going down. Then we've got Goldango with Air Balloon and Terra Normal, and it also has Thunder Wave just to paralyze things. I mean, Goldango doesn't really need too much explanation. It's a great Pokemon. This was originally supposed to be a Choice Scarf set with Trick instead of Thunder Wave, but the final Pokemon on my team is Iron Moth, who has taken the Choice Scarf. This one's EV'd specifically to outspeed Dragapult with its Choice Scarf, and then the rest is invested in bulk. Iron Moth has just proven to be such a fantastic Pokemon, honestly. It's just, it's just one of the best Pokemon in the meta. And it's, I think it's slowly rising its way up the up the ranks of the, the best Pokemon in Battle Stadium singles right now. It's just so solid. Anyways, let's try some games. My opponent has a really cute team. <laughs> That's the first thought that I have. Mousehold is just so cute. And then Wigglytuff obviously is really cute. It has the ability Cute Charm, so it's objectively cute. So, you know what? Let's bring Brute Bonnet here. There's nothing on my opponent's team that really scares my Brute Bonnet, except for that. The funny thing is they have Great Tusk, which is a ground and fighting type. Brute Bonnet as a grass and dark type is weak to fighting, and then as a poison type is weak to ground. So like, you know, I only get to trick them once by terastalizing and, and being resistant to a move, but I'm gonna bring, I am going to bring Brute Bonnet. Beyond that, I feel like they're pretty likely going to lead with Masquerain to set up Sticky Web. Kind of looks like what they're trying to do with their team, so I think I'm just going to lead Bax Caliber because I can outspeed it. And also, Bax Caliber is pretty good against their team. And then from there, these two Pokemon, Bax Caliber and Brute Bonnet, may struggle against. Scizor could be scary because it's decently bulky and also has Bullet Punch. You know what? <laughs> Let's bring Iron Moth. Iron Moth's great, obviously, against Scizor. They definitely could be Terra Water, though, so that's something I'm going to have to keep in mind. I think that's still okay, though. Yeah, I think that's still just fine. Also, I, actually, also, we got to be wary of that Population Bomb from Mousehold, but... What do we do about that? Actually, you know what? I'm going to bring Goldango. I think Goldango has a lot of potential against this team as well. And I mean, if you saw my last video with this team, I brought Iron Moth in every single one of my battles, and it was really good in all of those battles. So, you know, like I said, my goal here is to kind of try to showcase different things on this team. And my opponent's trainer card was pretty cool. They had the Eevee and Pikachu, you know, let's go Pikachu and Eevee fans out here. They do lead Masquerain, unsurprisingly. I'm gonna go ahead and lead Bax Caliber. I don't think there's any reason for me to not just go, uh, I forgot about the Intimidate to be honest, but again, I just don't think there's a reason for me to not Icicle Spear. I should be faster. I think Bax Caliber is naturally faster than Masquerain and they do switch fearing this Icicle Spear. I think it's a pretty obvious play, but it's also just really safe as well. And we also get to see what they go into. They go into their beautiful shiny Scizor, who I love. <laughs> Um, I have a shiny Scizor of my own that I, I need to show off more because Scizor is just an amazing Pokemon. So yeah, we get off some damage on this, some, some nice chip damage. Obviously, it's not a lot of damage, but it's something which can help us later on. <clears throat> Excuse me. But now we're in a position where we're actually 
in a pretty awkward position here. I could go ahead and terrestrialize, and in fact, I think that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and terrestrialize here. I think that still gives us an op option to get off some good damage with Brute Bonnet, although the, the ability to, to not terrest or the ability to not terrestrialize Brute Bonnet, if that makes any sense, is gonna hurt us. Or I guess I mean the inability to terrestrialize Brute Bonnet. Anyways, I'm gonna Dragon Dance. Let's see how this goes. This might be a big mistake on my part, but I think definitely terrestrializing makes a lot of sense here because they're likely to go for Bullet Punch. Even if they go for something like Close Combat, that's also fine with me. And then this just get, like Electric is just really good against Scizor because I don't think they're, I don't think they're gonna have any any moves that are gonna be super effective against me. And if they do get off some damage, you know, their bullet punches in the future won't be able to do that much damage to us because we will resist them. So they do go U-turn, which is fine by me. We already know that we're, we're good against Masquerain, so I kind of feel like they might just go into their third Pokemon now. And we are at plus one speed, which is just really terrifying for a Pokemon like Baxcalibur. We have to keep in mind though that they did get off that Intimidate, so we are now at neutral attack. We, we are... We, we went to minus one attack and now we're, then we went to plus one attack, so it kind of cancels out there. So only our speed is boosted currently, if that makes sense. But again, we're gonna hopefully see what their last is. But even if they just go into Masquerade, I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna click. Actually, if they go into Masquerade, I think I just click Terra Blast because if they switch into Scizor again, I don't know, we'll see what happens here. They do go Great Tusk, which I'm, I'm actually excited about because I mean, they could Terrastalize. I kind of wonder if I just Earthquake. I'm gonna Earthquake. I mean, I feel like they're gonna Terrastalize here, right? And I feel like this thing typically goes Terra Steel or maybe Terra... If it's Terra Steel and I Icicle Spear, that's just really bad for us. But then we can just go into like Goldango and, and just kind of really pressure them. I'm just gonna Earthquake. It gets off It gets off some consistent damage and they actually don't Terrastalize, which is really unfortunate for us. And then they're gonna kill us with Headlong Rush, which I'm also okay with. The beautiful thing about Goldango is I am actually immune to both of this Pokemon's stab moves, and so that's going to force a switch. We we can't, unfortunately, we cannot go into Brute Bonnet because we, there's no option to Terrastalize now, so they're just going to one-hit KO us with a fighting move, so we just absolutely cannot do that. So this lets me go into Goldango and then click Shadow Ball on whatever comes in, and that puts us in a really good position as well. The problem is, yeah, let's click Shadow Ball here. I, I anticipate that this is going to force a switch because of our air balloon. Like I said, they basically can't touch us. I guess they could go, they could go, what's it called? Um, actually, you know what the funny thing is? If they click Ice Spinner here, we're kind of dead. Like we, we might lose the game if they click Ice Spinner, unless we're faster than they are, which is possible. But like if, if they click Ice Spinner and they're faster, they break our air balloon, we get off damage with Shadow Ball and then they can kill us with Headlong Rush. So basically, as long as our Goldengo's Balloon is intact, we are in a good position against their Great Tusk. Now the thing here is... I am not certain I'm faster than them because I don't have max speed. Goldengo is naturally faster than Masquerade, but I kind of feel like there's a chance they're going to be faster if they're max speed timid. I'm going to check it real quick actually, Mask. Masquerain. Okay, I'm not looking at my switch, so I can't see how much time I have left. Masquerain with speed is gonna be, oh, you know what? Uh, let's see, Max. Oh, that's so funny. Um, if they're max speed timid, they will outspeed us by two points. So, like I said though, I, I, I need that air balloon intact if I'm going to win this game. So I'm actually just gonna switch here on the off chance that they're going for some kind of attacking move. And the funny thing is, if they if they actually go for Bug Buzz, we're just kind of dead anyway, so... I, I don't think they'd go for Bug Buzz though, unless it was their only attacking move. Okay, I'm pretty sure that... I'm pretty sure that Air Balloon negates Sticky Web. If it does, that's great. So let's see. Be awful if they switch here, obviously. Oh no, what did they go for? Whirlwind, are you serious? Well, I guess this will show us whether or not Air Balloon gets Sticky Web. 
Hmm. I think we're just gonna have to attack them with Goldango. Like I said though, if I lose that air balloon, it's GG. Okay, okay, that's good. I think I just have to go for it. I don't wanna keep playing this game. Oh, they are faster. Okay, well that's probably game. That's probably game, everyone. Dang it. I guess there's another option where... We also didn't have a good switch into... Because if there was a world where we lose Brute Bonnet without it doing any damage, then we're also going to lose with Goldango. So, yeah, this is just all kinds of all kinds of bad. Maybe I should have just not gone for Sucker Punch there. I don't know. They go into Scizor now. Huh. Um, I'm just gonna click Shadow Ball because there's no reason not to. I'll be faster, but they're probably gonna survive. See what they go for. Oh my goodness, that just takes that really well. They go for Thief and I'm dead. I'm not dead, okay. But then they have Bullet Punch. Um, yeah, there's no reason to not just go Shadow Ball here. I think I'm losing this. So, Terrastalizing Bax Caliber really cost me the game, unfortunately. Even though it also made a lot of sense, I don't know. I don't know. Either way, I don't I, I don't know that there was like a super great option for me. I think it was just the Pokemon I brought overall because it did put us in a position where we really needed Goldango's Air Balloon to stay intact if we had any chance of winning. And it just, I don't know, didn't really work out for us that way. Um, all they need to do is go into that Great Tusk. Oh, they do have Bullet Punch. They weren't going for it. Yeah, this kind of seals the deal for them. You know, if there was any hope that I would serve... Oh, now that... Oh my goodness, you gotta be kidding me. Um, let's go Spore here, actually. This is gonna be funny. If they don't kill us here, which they, they will, all they need to do is click U-turn, right? Yeah, they, or close combat, I guess. I thought maybe they'd go Bullet Punch just expecting me to continuously go Sucker Punch. I should have been smarter there, and there was actually a chance that we possibly... It, we would have to get super lucky, but there was a chance that we could win that game. Probably not, though, because they had Sticky Web. I was gonna say, we Spore their Scizor and then we spam Trailblaze, and then we'd have to hope that they don't wake up for like three turns so that we're at like plus three speed, and then they go into Great Tusk and we're faster. <laughs> so I just don't think there's a world where, where that all lines up in my favor. But at that point, that, that was all we could do. So I do recognize I didn't play well, and I think where I went wrong most of all was just what the Pokemon I brought. Like, I just kind of like, again, I'm, I'm kind of trying to force Brute Bonnet, we'll see. And maybe that's wrong of me, but I mean, you know, it's just for fun. And I really want to see what Brute Bonnet can do. We did bring it that game, but I mean, as you saw right there, it wasn't amazing. Uh, but that was a fun team. Let's go to the next one. Cool team. My opponent has Sableye. I actually caught a shiny Sableye yesterday. I like Sableye a lot, and I think it has a lot of potential with Prankster, but it's just in a rough spot with all the fairy types. And also dark types are immune to Prankster, so that just kind of makes it further more awkward. But I think it has some potential. Anyways... Let's go ahead and take a look here. My opponent has a lot of strong Pokemon for sure. <laughs> uh, I love me some Brute Bonnet, but I don't know if it's going to have a great a great game here. Um, I think I do want to bring it though once again. Um, it is a dark type, so again, it's immune to Prankster from Sableye. If I lead with it though, that's a little bit rough because Iron Valiant is a tough one. Do I lead with... Is there any world where I lead with Brute Bonnet? It has a good... Like I said, it has a good matchup against Sableye. But, I mean, I have two dark types. I, I kind of feel like they're not going to bring Sableye. I like Garchomp too. I like Garchomp a lot, in fact. Especially with the Focus Sash. So, beyond those two, what do I struggle with? What am I most afraid of? If I'm bringing Garchomp and Brute Bonnet, Iron Valiant is absolutely terrifying against me. So, I think that's going to force me to bring Iron Moth, just because it is really good against Valiant. Um, their Iron Moth is also pretty scary. Ugh, what am I lead with? I'm just gonna lead like this. I don't think that's correct. The thing about Brute Bonnet though is if we, it, it, it has some really bad matchups in the meta and, and on my opponent's team, but it also has some good matchups. So if we kind of predict correctly or if we get a little lucky with the leads, it actually can force a switch and, and get a spore off of something. So it can be a Pokemon that's very reliant on momentum. And if you get that momentum, it actually has a lot of potential. They do lead with Iron Hands, which is absolutely awful for me. However, I think I'm faster than it. I think I'm naturally faster. So I, I think I might actually just Terrastalize right away here. I don't care that much about Terrastalizing Moth here. 
I mean, it'd be nice, but also I think it's fine if we don't. Also, I don't really think I, I want to Terrasilize Chomp, although Terrasilizing Chomp is good against Valiant. Valiant is terrifying, but I'm going to Terra and Spore them. And like I said, if they switch, that's fantastic for me. If they stay in, they maybe go for a fighting move. They also might go Fake Out, which is not super common in singles, but you know, we'll see what happens here. We're going to Terrasilize. Let's see if Brute Bonnet can do something this game. Um, but if they switch, that's just perfect, uh, unless they go into Goldango. <laughs> they have a lot of options here. They do Drain Punch. That's, I think, a best case scenario for us, because now we resist it, and we get a Spore on this thing, so that's just fantastic. I'm just actually going to go ahead and click Trailblaze now. I feel like it's pretty likely they switch. They could have Lumberry. No, they don't. Okay. I'm going to click Trailblaze, see how much it does. We are at a boosted attack with our booster energy. It's not truly plus one, because booster energy, what it does is... It boosts only your speed stat by 50% if speed is your highest stat. All the other stats, it only boosts by 30% if they're your highest stat. So they're staying... I wonder if they have Earthquake. This thing does learn Earthquake, right? So Trailblaze is... What? 75 base damage, whereas Crunch is going to be... Uh, 60 base damage, so this Trailblaze is still is still stronger. <laughs> this is actually kind of bad. Okay, so what I'll do here is I'll, I'll go for enough Trailblazes to weaken it a little bit, and then if they wake up, hit me with a move, I might just Spore them again. I, I should have switched, honestly. Oh, they're Terrastalizing. Okay. That actually could be good for me because it means that possibly our Crunch might do more damage. They're Terra flying. Okay, that's funny. They're, they're going Terra flying just to resist my Trailblaze. So now I can go for Crunch and do a good chunk of damage. Un unless they wake up here and kill me, which I don't think is going to happen. I, like, even if they wake up, I don't think they have a move to kill me unless they have Earthquake, like I said. They are fast asleep. Perfect. So now I could just get to Crunch. So they actually helped me out here. Like, I was actually in a bad position just staying in and Trailblazing against them, but... I guess that doesn't do that much, but if we live here, we're going to be in a great spot. Okay, they Earthquake. Like I said, they, they do have that. And we do live it. So that's uh, Iron Hands's, or I'm sorry, uh, Brute Bonnet's bulk coming into play there. And we are at plus two speed now, so we are kind of scary. <laughs> let's see let's see what happens here. We're at plus two speed, which is, I mean, Brute Bonnet is so slow that it's not like we're going to be out speeding fast things like Iron Moth or Valiant, but if they go into something slower, like, this could be scary. Plus, we also have Sucker Punch, so let's see what this monster can do. And they already burned their Terrasilize, just, just like we did, to be fair. Gar uh, sorry, Dragonite would be something scary. They do go into Moth, which is horrifying. It's shiny, which I like a lot. I'm going to have to uh, get a shiny Iron Moth. Booster Energy, probably going to boost Speed? Question mark? Yes. So we do once again have Sucker Punch. The most common moves, all of the most common moves on Iron Moth are damage dealing moves. So that means Sucker Punch should be good for us. I do have 150 speed right now, which is actually not bad. Actually, did I go for three Trailblazes? Either way, I'm clicking Sucker Punch. There is no way I'm outspeeding an Iron Moth with a, with a, oh, that does so much damage. There's, what I was trying to say is there's no way I'm outspeeding an Iron Moth with a speed boost. So this is actually scary though. I mean, Let's see, because I think we go into Garchomp now with our Sash and then we knock them out. It's going to have to be our play. We do have a Scarf Moth, but... You know what the funny thing is? Iron Moth's typing is actually really good against itself. Like they resist, unless they have Discharge. So I think my safest play is just go Chomp here. And then I think my Iron Moth is good against just about anything else they go into. I wish I could get up rocks here, but either way, Earthquake's gonna be the, the play for sure because they cannot Terrastalize and we know that we are just gonna just absolutely destroy them. I mean, we could go for like anything here and kill them, oops. Um, that's good, that's good. So now if they go into something slower, that's actually amazing because we can get off a little bit of damage before Garchomp goes down and then that'll soften it up for my Iron Moth to come in. It is Valiant though, which is not great for Garchomp. However, if their only fairy move is, or rather if they if all they have are physical like like contact moves, we, we will hit them with rough skin and then we can go into our Iron Moth. Oh, we're faster. What? I'll take it. That's awesome. They do go Moonblast. I'm really surprised we're faster. Iron Valiant's a really fast Pokemon, so I kind of wonder what happened there, but that should mean we win this game. The whole reason I brought Iron Moth was because it's really good against 
Iron Valiant. And now we just, we know we're gonna be faster than them because we're Choice Scarf. So that lets us click Sludge Wave. Again, they cannot Terrastalize, so there's nothing we have to worry about here. This will finish the game. And I mean, Iron, Iron Moth, like I said, such a great Pokemon. I just, I can't sing its praises enough. But we actually got a game where Brute Bonnet got to do something, and it was actually pretty good. I could have played smarter with it there, like right after I put the eye, the Iron Hands to sleep, I actually should have just switched out into something else to really pressure them. But it ended up working out just fine with us, and we got to get off a lot of damage with Brute Bonnet. So good stuff there. All right, cool stuff here. My opponent's team, bunch of good Pokemon. Um, Baxcalibur looks very nice here. The funny thing about Brute Bonnet, though, against Breloom is Brute Bonnet's nice because it's immune to Spore, but of course it's a dark type, so you just don't want to bring it against Breloom. Okay, Bonnet is good, is fine against Garganackle, fine against Mimikyu, I think. Eh, if I Terrastalize it is. Like, kind of fine against Hydreigon. I'm, ju I'm just trying to justify bringing Brute Bonnet here. <laughs> It's good against... Actually, if I Terrastalize, it's fine against most everything. So I'm going to bring it. I'm going to force it. I don't care. I, I'm already in Master Ball tier. From there, I am tempted to bring Bax. Bax Calibur as well. I kind of feel a little bit obligated to bring Goldango because of that Breloom. Thing is, if I bring Goldango, I feel like I'm likely to want to Terrastalize it. Whereas, if I bring Brew Bonnet, I also really want to Terrastalize Bonnet. So... I think this is gonna be another game with Bax, Bonnet, and Moth. I think that's gonna be it. I like King Gambit a lot too. I actually do like King Gambit, but I think Bax Calibur kind of scares me from bringing that. Plus Iron Moth's also really good against it. King Gambit's great if we can like get it in against Garganackle and then like set up a sub and, and they switch out. That's just a perfect situation for King Gambit, but it's not good 1v1 against like King or uh, Baxcalibur or Breloom or, you know, a bunch of other Pokemon they have. Shiny Baxcalibur, I do like that. <laughs> we actually both lead with our Baxcalibers. This is going to come down to a prediction game turn one. Thing is, I kind of feel safe just clicking Icicle Spear, right? If they go, if they go Dragon Dance, that's absolutely horrifying, but... It's like the most, unless they're Terra Fire, which if they're Terra Fire, kudos to them. In fact, actually in that case, maybe Earthquake's the best play because it will destroy a Terra Electric Baxcalibur or a Terra Fire one and still do neutral damage for either of their other more common Terra types. This is only bad if they go Terra Fire. I'm gonna click Icicle Spear. It does more damage. And if they Terra Ground, then GG, but... Okay, this will do some decent damage, but the funny thing is, they're gonna just do it right back to us, so... Uh, worst case scenario, they Dragon Dance, though. That is gonna be terrifying if they do. But now we know that that's a two-hit KO. They Glaive Rush. I actually, honestly, I did not think about this. Okay. But this does let us go into Moth to get the KO. Or do I just go into this and Sucker Punch? This is actually scary. I'm gonna go into Moth just because it's kind of a guaranteed KO. And if we go into Bonnet and, and they have like Dragon Dance or something and they predict, like we're just in so much trouble at that point. Um, I was gonna look at their team. So, tempted to click Fiery Dance here. I think that's the play, although they have a lot of Pokemon that resist it. What about Sludge Wave? I think actually Sludge Wave is better. Actually, Sludge Wave is just straight up better. The only Pokemon that they have that resists it is Moth. We could go Gleam, of course, but they definitely have Pokemon that resist that. Although they do have a lot of Pokemon that are weak to it, too. I guess I just go Gleam here. It, it's a guaranteed kill. They do have Shard, which is fine. It actually does some decent damage. <laughs> this uh, Vaxcalibur is terrifying. <gasps> oh my... Oh, they're Assault Vest. That makes sense. <sighs> okay, well, we're going to take some needless damage. Well, the thing is, if Dazzling Gleam didn't kill, I don't think any of our other moves would have, right? Dazzling Gleam would be 160 base damage against them because it's super effective, whereas Sludge Wave would have been, I think, 135. So yeah, Dazzling Gleam was our strongest move against them and it did not kill, so nothing else would have. So, scary stuff. Yeah, Vax Calibur is pretty pretty terrifying. Now they go into their own Moth, pretty smart on their part. 
I wonder if they have Discharge. Because like I said, Moth is a decent check to, to Moth. <laughs> oh, great. But they got a special attack boost. This is actually really bad. I need my Moth if I'm going to have any chance of winning this game. But if they go for like Fiery Dance here, I, it's, they're just going to obliterate my Brute Bonnet. But if I just stay in, I can't stay in with my Moth and spam Dazzling Gleam because they four times resist it. So this is an instance where the scarf on my iron moth is a is a bad thing if they go fiery dance i think it's just game over maybe they have like discharge or something we'll see or maybe they have like a terra terra blast with a certain terra type terra water <gasps> they're gonna go water i was gonna say water blast if they go water blast then we resist it and then we can go for su uh, sucker punch oh they do that's nice thing is i'm not certain that they're gonna kill well actually this paves the way for us so we resist that pretty nicely. We go Sucker Punch here. I, You know what? I could have Terastalized there. I don't know if it matters. Maybe I should have. That's scary. Yeah, I should have Terastalized. I probably could have lived this. Oh, no. Well, now we get to go into our Iron Moth. And the problem now, though, is if we want to knock them out, we have to go... Well, because we, we can't go Fiery Dance because they're just going to survive. I wonder if we go Sludge Wave. It, they don't resist anymore, so that's nice. I think I Terrastalize and go Sludge Wave. And then, I mean, like I said earlier, Sludge Wave is the best thing against their team. The problem is Mimikyu has Disguise and Breloom likely has Focus Sash. So we could go Dazzling Gleam and hope their last is Hydreigon, but there's just no good way around all this. We could also go Energy Ball and hope that their last Pokemon is... Uh, what's that called? Uh, Garganackle. It's just a prediction game, honestly. Like, okay, let's let's try to think. I don't have much time here. Uh, if they brought back Excalibur and, and Moth, that means... I mean, it, they could have brought anything, honestly. I definitely Terastalize, and then I'm just going to click Ball. Because it's, it's now Stab. It will kill... It will absolutely kill their Iron Moth. And then, if their last Pokemon's Garganackle, we probably win the game. If their last Pokemon's Mimikyu, we have a chance, but we honestly probably lose. If their last Pokemon's Breloom, we probably lose. There's a, there's just a lot of what ifs, right? That, that always ends up happening with these games, but that's fine. Let's see what happens. That's, that's the fun of it, right? You make some predictions. Sometimes they pay off and you feel great. Sometimes they go wrong. Sometimes you, you predict incorrectly and you feel awful, <laughs> but it's all fun, right? It's all fun in games until someone gets energy balled. See what they got here, everyone. Mimikyu. Kind of unsurprising. Although with Disguise and the fact that they're going to hit us for neutral damage, it, I just kind of feel like it doesn't matter what I went for. Like, if I locked myself into Sludge Bomb it's, or Sludge Wave, it's the same thing. First hit breaks their Disguise, and then it's pretty likely that they, that they kill us here. So I feel like they might kill us with Play Rough. If they don't, if they go Shadow Claw, even if they don't kill us, they're probably going to have Shadow Sneak. So there's just a lot of ways that they kill us here. Yeah, this is a smart play on their part. <gasps> we do survive, but I mean, come on, Mimikyu, Mimikyu always has Shadow Sneak, right? If they don't, I mean, that's awesome, but they're going to. Yeah, of course they do. Okay, good games. Good games to my opponent. That was a good one. It's fun to see Terra Water Iron Moth as well, especially with Terra Blast, because one thing that I noticed on Moth is it has a lot of great coverage, but... It sometimes struggles to hit certain Pokemon, and again, that's why I, I, I've been loving Choice Scarf, but that's one of the big liabilities of having Choice Scarf on it, is you lock yourself into a certain move, and then you're at the mercy of whatever your opponent has in the back. Although in this case, it kind of wasn't really true, because we were going to lose to Mimikyu no matter what move we locked ourselves into. All of our moves hit Mimikyu for neutral damage, so that wasn't the problem here, but either way, that was a fun one. Let's go to the next one. Let's actually do one more. Cool stuff here. I, I really like Serena. I, I think it's a cool Pokemon, and it unfortunately just doesn't get that much love, but they also have Vaporeon. Vaporeon's cool. It also has potential to be really annoying, though, because it's really bulky, and it has access to, like, Wish and stuff. Let's see how this plays out. Brute Bonnet could be pretty strong here, though. It's good against Serena, but also Serena does typically have like, fighting and, and, and even fairy-type moves, so... Not sure about Bonnet in this in this game. And then of course Brute Bonnet has the same issue against against Great Tusk as last game, where, you know, if we predict a fighting move, we can terrestrialize and kind of catch it off guard, but we only get to do that trick once, then we're weak to all its moves. I'm gonna bring it though. I am going to bring it. I do also like Baxcalibur here. I think Baxcalibur has a solid matchup against 
just about all my opponent's Pokemon. It at least has a move that can hit all of them for super effective damage. Of course, we have to be Terrastalized to hit Corviknight, but I like that. And then probably just Moth again. So if we lead Moth and, and they force a switch right away for us, we're going to have to switch into one of our other Pokemon, obviously. I think that's fine, though. I'm going to lead Moth. We might have to Terrastalize Moth, and if we do, that does make our last two Pokemon weak. And actually, I mean, all three of these Pokemon are good, but something I didn't think about, and something that you do have to consider in S Battle Stadium singles in, in Scarlet and Violet is which Pokemon you're going to Terrastalize, right? So if I... All three of my Pokemon that I brought are are good if they can Terrastalize, but if we take that away from the other ones, that can be a real problem. So they lead with Great Tusk. We could Terrastalize here. I'm not certain. I, I kind of feel like Great Tusk with Assault Vest is kind of common. So I think I have to Terrastalize and go E-Ball here. I don't think there's any way they go for close combat because we, we resist it. And I don't think there's any way we go for Ice or they go for Ice Spinner because we also resist that. So if, if they stay in here and just go for like Earthquake or Headlong Rush, this is fantastic for us. Or even something like Stealth Rock or, or Taunt or Knock Off. That's just perfect for us. They also might switch. They also might terastalize. All of those are awful for us, but you know, we're, we're kind of making the, the bold prediction on turn one. And I mean, Iron Moth again is a Pokemon that, that likes being terastalized a lot of the time. And so even though we're terastalizing at turn one, there's potential that it can bring us value later on as well. Perfect, this is great, this is great. Hopefully we kill, but again, this thing typically runs Assault Vest, so maybe not. Perfect. Perfect all around. Um, and they're not certain that we're Choice Scarf. So that could affect how they bring in, what they bring in, unless they were Choice Scarf. So they might be, actually they might be certain we're Choice Scarf. Of course they go into their own Moth, which is a smart play on their part, and they get that booster energy. I've been loving my uh, Scarf Moth, and it's been doing really well for me, but maybe in the future I'll actually be bringing, um, I'll actually be bringing, uh, what am I trying to say? Um... Duh. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to think here. Oh, this is actually tough. They four times resist Energy Ball. But I don't want to lose Moth right now. I think we have to go into backs and probably honestly lose it. They're probably going for Fiery Dance here. If we had Ice Shard, this would be cool because we could get off at least a little bit of damage before going down. But, I mean, it is what it is. This is all we got here. Yeah, they go dance. The reason I'm doing this, and this might end up being actually really bad. Oh, we survived that. Okay, okay, okay. They don't get the boost. But then they have Dazzling Gleam. It is what it is. Let's go Quake. Yeah. They gonna Terra? Grass is the most common Terra type on Moth, so maybe I should have gone... I don't know. Mm, do we live this? No, we don't. Okay. They're at plus one speed. We cannot Terrastalize Bonnet. We do have Sucker Punch, though. Maybe we'll get a crit. I shouldn't expect that. By the way, I, just for a little meme-age, I, I got it the, the Gourmet marks. <laughs> so it's Brute Bonnet the Gourmet, even though it looks disgusting. That's kind of the joke. All right. This is going to determine our fate. There's no way I spore, right? Yeah, there's a chance we might knock them out with Sucker Punch. Come on. Nope. If I were Terra Dark. There's a chance we live this, honestly, but probably not. <gasps> Are you kidding me? Okay, bro. And they finally get the special attack boost. They might switch, though. But if they switch, they lose their booster energy, so there's a chance that our Iron Moth can knock them out later. A chance, not, not a guarantee. If they stay in... Okay, of course. I, I don't think there's a reason. Uh, maybe I should have... I, I actually should have just spored them, right? There's no world where they stay in there. Oh, never mind. Spore wouldn't have done anything. But if we can get damage on Serena, that's nice too. This is actually paving the way for us to potentially win this game. They know about Sucker Punch. But... Oh, you know what? I'm dumb. See, Serena is not a Pokemon you run into a lot. I think Serena is actually immune to priority. There we go. Yep. I, I just completely forgot about that. Yeah, it's, like I said, Serena is a Pokemon you just do not run into, like, at all. Um, if they're Scarfed, that's great for us. If they're not... Okay, they're Life Orb. So we're going to be faster. And we have Fiery Dance. If we get a special attack boost and we kill them, 
there's actually a chance we can win this game, or if we get a special attack boost and they don't kill us with whatever move they're going for. There's a there's a few ways in which we can actually pull pull the victory out of this game. Mm, of course, oh man, I, I should have seen this coming too. All right, yeah, I'm just I'm just kind of not thinking of all possible angles here. But if we're gonna lose this game, is that rock? Oh my god, you gotta be kidding me. If we're gonna lose this game, I guess losing to something you don't expect is is fine. <laughs> this might still do some decent damage. No, it doesn't. Not at all. <laughs> uh, special attack boost. Maybe they miss. Oh, oh, what? Oh my god! What is going on? We might knock them out now. This is rough. This is this is a rough way to win. Although I was I was crying about a getting a lucky crit with sucker punch for my brute bond. Like I was hoping to get a lucky crit, so we did still get that luck. But I mean, if high jump kick was the oh no, I'm dumb. I'm I'm a grass type, so high jump kick was a good move. Like assuming they hit, I'm at plus one. There's a, we might not kill them though. See what happens here. See what happens, everyone. I'm scared, everyone. Oh, ho, ho, ho! I'm happy I won, but I kind of feel I kind of feel cheesy winning that way. Once I knew what I had to do to win, I tried to play to those outs. So I, tr I, I did everything I could to, to try to get the win after. Yes, I did make some bad plays in the beginning there, but you know, I still, I would like to believe I still tried to play the best of my ability. My opponent did unfortunately end up losing because of that miss. Um, although if I had lived the high jump kick, which I'm not sure if I would have or not. Either way, I mean, Serena's cool. Cool stuff. I, I That was stupid of me to go for Sucker Punch against it, yes. But those were some fun games, and we got to show off some Brute Bonnet action. I do like Brute Bonnet a lot. I think there's a lot of potential there. So, you know, Terra Poison's nice for taking off some of those weaknesses, but even if you go Terra Dark, you do remove some of the weaknesses that Brute Bonnet has. You're still weak to Fairy, of course, and Fighting, which are two pretty common types, but you remove a lot of the other ones and you get to hit harder with Sucker Punch. So in the future, if I do bring Brute Bonnet again, I think I'm gonna try Terra Dark. So anyways, everyone, thank you very much for watching. That was a lot of fun. I appreciate all the support. If you have any teams that you'd like to see me play, like any of your teams that you'd like to make and, and share with me, feel free to do so and I'd be happy to show those off in future videos. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, please subscribe for more content and I'll see you next time.